Alrighty, so today we're gonna start a new series and as you might have guessed from the title of the video, it's gonna be all about architecture in .NET. The system that we're gonna build is a POC for notification system that for starters will handle webhooks notifications. And in my personal opinion, webhooks is a form of notification where you notify some web apps that subscribe to some of your events. We're gonna build the whole system up using the modular monolith approach and some of the practices that I've picked up over the years while building such kind of systems. Essentially the first model itself will be the webhooks model and then I'll show you how you can add additional models to handle things like email notification, uh, I don't know, push notifications to your mobile devices, etc. The idea behind this course came to me a couple of days ago when a colleague of mine asked me if I knew about any kind of webhooks open source project and I knew none of those but I've worked in the past on a custom built webhooks project that was handling thousands of events. So I decided to do an implementation on my own using my past experience, the good things we did there, the bad things we did there and some of the other practices that I've picked up since that project was launched. And yeah, as always, I'm an engineer that's curious to test out some new approaches, some new libraries, some new patterns that I've picked up recently and I wanted to give them a try in a real world scenario. Okay, so let's get over to the system itself. So the notification system. Every notification has a source, has a payload and has a client or more than one client, obviously. So we're gonna start from there. Uh, essentially what we have here is gonna be a source application that will make an HTTP call to a push service and this push service then will put a message on an event queue and store the fact that an event has come in. Uh, this queue itself will be more like an integration component for the models inside our notification system because more than one model will be listening to that specific queue. In our case, it will be a webhook service that will listen to events that happen on this queue. It will be a mobile notification service which will listen to events happening here. It might be an emailing system uh, service, sorry, which will listen to this specific queue. In our case, the mobile notification service will listen to events, will push notifications through APNS or Firebase to mobile applications but we will mostly focus on this side of things. So we're gonna have a webhook service that listens to events, that picks up data from the webhooks repository about who the clients are for this specific event. And then for each of those clients, we'll push an event to a separate queue where we're gonna have a webhooks processor. Uh, that's gonna handle those events and handle calling the client applications. Uh, meanwhile, storing information about the processed events in a specific Redis cache. Uh, essentially, the webhook service is going to have more than one component over here. It's going to have the webhook repository, sorry, as said, and it's going to have an application registry component. You might call it a separate model over here because basically it's an application registry component that will store information about your available applications, about those the events that those applications have. Uh, in the past, we've used the graph from Azure to handle all our application registries. In our case, it will be a simple repository or a simple service that will have a database, a Postgre database and a Redis cache on top just to show you how you can serve cache more on that later. So yeah, this is the main purpose and the main end goal for our course. We're gonna have a client layer, then we're gonna have a business logic layer, then as well a data access layer that's gonna be represented by application registry, webhooks, and essentially the push service will have some built-in data access logic services that will be served as Nougat packages, so I didn't include them over here. This view, however, doesn't show you everything the course will contain, and obviously it should not since it's not the purpose of this diagram. And I've prepared a smaller one that I was getting myself when I was creating the, when I was gathering ideas for the course, which is this one. Basically over here we can see as well the components that we're gonna build and some technologies that we're gonna cover inside the course. And yeah, as you can see, it's pretty much a lot of different technologies and a lot of different patterns that I want to cover. 
essentially, if you're going to implement all of this, you're going to have an over-engineered solution. But I want to show you everything that I've used in the past and that has helped me in some way or another. So you have a greater toolbox, let's say, of different libraries, different patterns that you're gonna use. Anyway, let's start with source applications since those are the most logic ones. So for starters, we're gonna use HTTP files and Postman collections to send data over to our API. In time, we're gonna use Kokona to build the console application the, because I wanted to try this library out for some time. And we're gonna use a push API SDK uh, which will be built using Refit from the contract part for the push service. At the end, we're gonna use a gateway, which will be using, in our case, Yarp. Uh, I want to cover topics such as API key, load balancing, rate limiting, service discovery, uh, yeah, and some other technologies over here that I picked up at some workshops over the years. Uh, the push service itself is gonna be real simple, so we're gonna go over the Outbox pattern, Refit for generating the API SDK, health checks, uh, mass transit for working with the queues, daytime, uh, hang fire itself, etc. The application registry service, really simple, specification, pagination, cache patterns for working with cache, SQL views, decorator plus plus cache, filtering, mapster, etc. The webhook service itself, yeah, I'm not gonna name all this, you can pause and take a look at yourself. Small disclaimer here, we're gonna cover both types of communication between components, between modules inside a modular monolith, uh, because I want to cover both synchronous and asynchronous communication and how you can do that, since sometimes you're gonna have to pull up data from another model. And in our case, it will be between the webhook service and application registry service. Initially, it will be an in-memory call. Then we're gonna move to a gRPC. Uh, by the time we implement gRPC, I think we're gonna move to a Microsoft services thingy, but so the web UI is basically Blazor or Maui. I was, I'm really curious about both of those approaches and I've used Blazor in the past. So I want to build a web UI on top uh, for the Blazor, but Maui might be a good idea addition to the course. If you have any kind of resource for Maui, I'm really grateful if you could send me a link to it inside the comments or inside link on LinkedIn or Twitter. Uh, next, the event processor itself is gonna be a console-based microservice with long running processes, background jobs. We're gonna uh, take a look at HTTP client practices like and using poly, circuit breaker, token refresh, idempotent consumer, dead letter queues, and at some point, we're going to cover serverless as previously we've used Azure functions or lambdas for the event processors in our systems. So yeah, that's mostly the content that I want to cover up in the upcoming videos. As the last part of the video, I want to go over the abstract structure of the system itself. So let's get over to our solution. So we're going to have solution items folder where we have the editor config, build props, directory packages, global JSON, uh, some stuff that you might be familiar with. Uh, not many are using directory packages, props. I don't know why, because I really like having all my Nougat packages centralized inside a single file. And the panda boat, uh, that which we are using for our projects to keep our Nougat uh, packages up to date, uh, really does wonders with this approach since it has to change only inside one solution. Yeah, easier to manage merge conflicts because it creates merge conflicts from time to time. Next, we're gonna have utilities folder. It's a basic shared library with some RabbitMQ stuff over here since I don't want to use mass transit from the get-go. Uh, routing thingy, it's basically the endpoint definition from the minimal API course since we're gonna be using heavily minimal APIs in our structure. Uh, next, the services and over here, as on the image, we can see application registry, which has two projects, the service itself and the contracts. Next, event processor, which is a simple console-based application, the push service, which has the implementation, the contracts themselves, the webhook service, which aside, it has two different folders and I'll go over why there are two. And if we take a look at this diagram, we can see that the webhook service itself 
is a business layer logic component and the webhooks repository is a data access layer component. To me, it seems totally normal that at some point you might have to split up your data access layer into separate single deployable components. I've had that in the past and in the past we've had the N tier, do not confuse it with N layer architecture approach. I've worked as well on some high load systems that were built around the N tier uh, architecture idea and we had data access layer services and business logic layer services, which to me right now, it seems like a totally valid case. When thinking about the notification system and having the webhooks service and repository split up apart uh, in the context of our system, it's a bit crazy, but the course itself is aimed to be generic. So I wanted to cover up that topic as well. Some developers might Take a look at this and say, well, but this is not clean architecture. We don't see onion type diagram thingies over here. It's not the best solution. It's really old school and it's from the last year or the last couple of decades. And essentially, yes, this small diagram is not like the onion type that we're used to see in all the present fancy presentations online. So I decided to try and get this diagram over to an onion like thingy. And this is really how it came out. And essentially, this is what I came up with. And you might be screaming right now, but bear with me for a second. At the core of all the circles, we have the, the main part where we have the webhooks, the applications, the application events, the incoming events from other apps, essentially the models themselves. Then we have the abstractions on top where we have the I repositories, the push service, the commands and the queries. Uh, to me, the next part is basically where the difference clears because we have an implementation uh, details layer. So we have the webhook service, the repositories themselves, the push service, and we have the routing as well for as an implementation detail. Uh, since I could not put it one layer up, since the routing depends only on abstractions, not on the implementation themselves. And the last one being the host. Basically what's different from the dogmatic clean architecture over here is that uh, we don't have an application layer, uh, the business layer logic, let's say so. We have directly the implementations over here. To me, it's not a big problem if on the diagram I cannot fit it like that. But hey, some people might be screaming right now. And if I had to add some vertical slicing, I would do it like this. Okay, so we have the vertical slices more pronounced over here. We have the push, the events and application repository, the webhooks repository, we have the webhook service itself. Then we have here a couple of dots for any kind of any number of other services that might pop up in time. So this is a little bit of a different way from what most are used to deal with when they design their systems. Uh, but I've used this approach for the last six years and it did me wonders since we were able to deliver everything on time and on budget, sometimes even ahead of time and budget itself. So it's a tool that works for me and approach that works for me and one that I wanted to share with all of you. So this was it for the current video and starting with the next one, we're gonna go and dirt our hands with code. Uh, most likely I'm going to build the whole thing up behind the scenes and then during the videos just go over what has been built and what's the meaning for each and every component. This will make it faster for you to watch and faster to get a grip on how things work. Uh, as a side note, let everyone know um, As a side note, if you liked what we saw over here, uh, please share it with your friends to get more audience to the course, to get more traction, to get more eyes on it. Since more eyes means uh, more opinions and more uh, debates on the architecture topic, which is a great thing since debates is what uh, drives architecture and what I love about architecture itself. Uh, everyone having their own opinion, their own experiences of what worked and what did not work for them. And it's great. 
Other than that, I'll leave a couple of links to some courses that I really liked uh, over the time. So one of the more recent one is the Milan Yelanovich course on pragmatic clean architecture, which I started, but I haven't finished yet. So, so far it's really great. I'll leave a link in the description itself. And yeah, any kind of feedback is welcome. So stay tuned until next time. See ya.